Hello Java developers! My name is Matt Rabo and today I'd like to show you how to build a beautiful CRUD application with Spring Boot and Angular. Let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that I wrote called Build a Beautiful CRUD App with Spring Boot and Angular. And so it shows you not only how to get them running as separate applications, but also package it into one artifact that you can distribute as a jar, which is how we like to develop our Spring Boot applications. So if you scroll down in the blog post, you'll see one of the first thing is the prerequisites. Java 17, that's because Spring Boot 3.2 requires it. Uh, Node 18, and that's because Angular 17 requires it as well as HTTP IE, which we're not gonna use in this demo, but is useful if you do the steps in the blog post, the Auth0 CLI and an Auth0 account. And so what I developed for this CRUD application is a simple jug tour because I like to do jug tours. And rather than step through each individual step, I believe that you could do that yourself, right? You could read through the blog post or there's a demo script that I'll show you that you could use. And what I wanna show you is just how to get it all running because that's much easier and you can do it in under 10 minutes. So down here, it points to a GitHub repo here, Octadev, Auth0, Spring Boot, Angular CRUD example. And so I can just copy this git command. So I'm gonna open up a terminal window and then CD into my downloads directory and run the git clone command. That creates a jug tours directory and we can open that up in IntelliJ. And so there's an app directory, that's where the Angular app is. And then the Spring Boot directory is the main directory. That's where the project is. So you'll see in this readme here, it gives that git clone instruction, but also it tells you to run the Auth0 CLI and run the Auth0 login command. So let's just make sure I have the Auth0 CLI installed, Auth0 version 130. While we're here, make sure we have Java 17. Ooh, Java 21, even better. And node 18. All right, and then we'll put this on the left, all the way on the, or on the right. And we'll put this on the left and make that easier to read. And so we're gonna run the Auth0 login command to connect with our tenant as a user. Press enter to open a browser. Confirm. And it'll prompt us for consent for all the different things the Auth0 CLI can do to our tenant. Now we're all set there. And it says we're successfully logged in, so we can clear that and then run Auth0 apps create. And the important things here are this callback URL with 8080 in it for Spring Boot and Spring Security. That's the uh, callback URL expects. And then for doing the authentication when you're running Angular with ng serve on 4200. That's another one it needs. And then the logout URLs are 8080 and 4200. If you want to use the Auth0 dashboard at manage.auth0.com, you can do that. Just make sure and use those URLs as well. And so now what we can do is copy the results into an octa.env file. Create this at the top level. And you might notice it's already been ignored in git ignore right here, both for Windows and for Mac Linux. So we're gonna copy our Auth0 domain in here for the issuer. Make sure and have that trailing slash and the client ID. Once we have those up, we can go back to our instructions. If you're on Windows, you'll wanna name the file .octa.env.pat and use set instead of export, or if you wanted to set your environment variables some other way, go ahead and do that, that should work just fine. Uh, so for the Mac, we have to do source.octa.env to set those environment variables, and then we can start it with mvn spring boot run dash p prod. And so what the dash p prod does is it actually downloads node, installs it, and then builds the Angular app and packages it with the Spring Boot app. And there are some things you have to do the Spring Boot app to set up CSRF and to make sure everything's packaged right. And there's a spa web filter that forwards the routes to Angular when necessary. So 
please read the blog post or there's this demo script in here at demo.adoc that if you have the ASCII doctor plugin, it'll render it nicely. And this has all the individual steps. It's just basically a condensed version of the blog post that makes it easy to just copy and paste. And I also have IntelliJ Live templates that I've updated. So if you want to run certain commands to you know, do the SBA event, SBA group, if you import those live templates, you can use those or you can just copy them right out of here. So nice little demo script that you can do if you want to on your own. And you know, this one's just designed to get you up and running. So now that that's running, let's go back to the readme. See what's next. Of course, we want to see if it works, right? So the next thing is to log in. So we'll open up localhost 8080, click login, and it'll prompt us for consent. So this is beautiful Angular that app we just requested, wants access to our profile and email, and boom, we're in. So now we could go here and add a new one. Uh, for instance, the Dallas Jug is one of my first stops next April. And you can even edit it and add an event. So for instance, this plus button right here, that is uh, 423. Topic is Matt Rabel, TBD. So there we are, that's all working. And then if you go back to home, you can of course log out. And the cool thing is there's also Cypress tests in this project. So you can add your Cypress settings to that octa.env and then you'll be able to run the Cypress tests. Of course, you don't have to add them to this file, but since it's ignored, you might as well, right? So it's easy enough to grab that os0 domain, just the raw value. And then my email is mrabel. All right. And then we can open up another window, cd into the app directory, since that's where it's located. Make sure and source the octa.env. And when I say where it's located, I mean that's where the Cypress tests are located. So you could do npm run e2e and that would run them all headless, but I like to run them with ng e2e so we can kind of see them running. So we can run them in Electron, just for kicks. And this groups one is the main one. It basically tests the crud on the groups. So you can see it logs in there. And it logs in and logs out between each test run, but it's basically verifying that, you know, the list works, the edit works, the delete works, all that. And there we go. Add button works, adds a new group, edit a group, all that. So then we can close that down. Go back to our readme. And you'll see here, there's also a main.yml that I use for GitHub Actions. So if we were to open that up, you can see in GitHub workflows, it sets up Java, checks out the project, and then runs MVN verify. That makes sure all the tests pass. And then it goes and use the Cypress action to start the app, run it on 8080, and test it all. And then all these secrets are stored in GitHub. And then if there's any failures, it uploads the screenshots at the end. So that's pretty slick. And in here, you can see that all the workflows are passing, right? So this goes to that Auth0 Spring Boot Angular CRUD example on GitHub. All the workflows are passing even when I updated it recently. And if we were to go into settings, secrets and variables, you can see where all those repository secrets are. And then another cool thing you could do, if you go to manage.auth0.com, you could update the app to use passkeys. So this is already using pass keys. That's why it prompts me to log in there. I can use touch ID. And then if I go to authentication, authentication profile, click identifier first. So save that, go to database, go to pass key, authentication methods turn on pass keys. And so now the cool thing is, is I can go to my app, Bootiful Angular, and I can say for the connections, use pass keys, not username and password, right? 
and you can still have Google Social if you want there. But now, if I was to go and log in, you would see it just prompts me for my email address, but I can also continue with a passkey. So I haven't created one yet. Let's go ahead and mrable, or actually you have to do the sign up, I think. And then you have to do mrable at gmail.com. Continue and then create a pass key. We'll do an RI Cloud keychain here. Use Touch ID to verify it. Accept. And now I'm using pass keys to log into this application. So that's pretty slick, right? I like that. So again, if you have any questions about how everything fits together, what the code looks like, go ahead and clone the project. Look in the app directory for Angular. Look in the main directory and the source directory for Spring Boot. And, you know, everything's in there. Security configuration and all that. It's always fun to look at the security configuration, right? And, you know, enjoy. Enjoy using Spring Boot. Enjoy using Angular. And enjoy using Auth0. You can find me on LinkedIn at mrabel. You can find me on Twitter at mrabel. You can find my whole team at Octodev on Twitter. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch cool demos like this one and learn how to make your full stack apps more secure. Cheers.